we declare that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, organized on April 6, 1830, is Christ's New Testament Church restored. This church is anchored in the perfect life of its chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, and in his infinite atonement and literal resurrection. There is power in his name. He can heal a weary soul. Church is very unique because of this, and we are very lucky that our church focuses so much on Jesus Christ. In Helaman 512 it says, And now my sons remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that you must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe, because of the rock which upon ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build they cannot fall. I love this scripture because it highlights the strength that we get from building our foundations on Christ, which is essential in order to receive happiness in this life and in order to stand against the adversary. Jesus Christ has once again called apostles and has given them priesthood authority. He invites all of us to come unto him in his church to receive the Holy Ghost, the ordinance of salvation, and to gain enduring joy. church i'm able to bless and pack, pass the sacrament and while we've been on lockdown for a couple months i've had the privilege of blessing the sacrament for my own family as well um, by participating in this ordinance i've had enduring enduring joy because exercising my priesthood makes me happy and i always feel the holy ghost present during the sacrament another ordinance that most of you guys have participated in that i love to do is baptisms for the dead in the temple it is pretty safe to say that enduring joy can be felt when performing baptisms for the dead, for those getting baptized, those baptizing, and those on the other side of the veil. I myself have felt enduring joy when participating in this ordinance, because I know that I am serving those who have passed away, and I can feel the Spirit very strongly in the temple. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Cranston. I'm from the Visalia Mineral King Ward and I recently just got back from serving a mission in Wyoming and then Ecuador. I am so grateful to be here. Things are obviously a little bit different at this youth conference, but I'm hopeful that you also have a wonderful time and that you can feel Heavenly Father's love for you. We are living in difficult times and to keep moving forward, it is so important that you know that you are children of God. But today, I really wanna talk about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is God's kingdom here on earth, but what does that mean and why does it matter? Well, we know that God has a plan for us, a plan that existed since before we were born on this earth. And in that plan, he sent us here so that we could grow and learn how to live in his presence again. The church is how we do that. <laughs> The church is a system that God has put upon the earth. It's where we learn how to obey God and follow Christ's doctrine. Now, most of you are familiar with the story I'm about to tell. God is a God of order. He has given us the church from the beginning so we could have the gospel and the priesthood and learn all under the right authority. Sometimes people have rejected the church and sometimes it doesn't quite look like the church we had today, but it's always been there. In Christ's day, the church was established perfectly. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 14, we learn, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But there were people in that day who could not accept the church that Christ had established. They crucified the Savior and eventually killed all the apostles. When that happened, the authority of God on the earth was lost and no one could maintain the church. No one could say what was doctrine or what was principle, what was practice, what was opinion. There was no one to do that. But when the time was right, almost 2,000 years later, Christ restored this church. Excuse me, Christ restored his church. There was no need to create something new because Christ had already created it. He was just putting the church back together in our day. So he called a prophet, bestowed the priest upon worthy men, and from there, the true gospel was taught again. But let's go back to the beginning really quickly. When Adam and Eve came to earth, God gave them the gospel and organized the church. Want to know the funniest thing about that? Adam and Eve's church was a lot like ours is right now. We read in Moses 5.11, And Adam and Eve blessed the name of God, and they made all things known unto their sons and daughters. Did you catch it? Just like ours today, their church was in the family. The beauty of the church is that it's directed by Christ, a perfect being. <laughs> he will make it so that we can learn the truthfulness of the gospel under the direction of the priesthood in any situation. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the kingdom of God here upon the earth, and it's the only place where we can learn of the gospel of Jesus Christ and make covenants to return to our Heavenly Father. I know that the gospel we learn in our homes and at church is the roadmap that will lead us back to our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Home one day. Having Christ's church here on earth is such a blessing. It is a huge privilege we have to go and to learn of God, our Heavenly Father. I love this church, and I love this gospel. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love is more than just a word, it's more than just a feeling in our souls. Love is why He came to earth to be the hope we turn to when we feel alone. We can love.
since this restoration was initiated by God the Father and his beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Millions throughout the world have embraced a knowledge of these prophesied events. The key words I took away from these paragraphs is Jesus Christ. It's in the name of our church. It's his restored church. He is the chief cornerstone. He is our anchor. He has atoned. He was resurrected. He has priesthood authority, and he wants us to come unto him. We know that through his words, through his church, and through his example, we can have eternal life. He is the only way. Kara was my best friend growing up. We were in Young Women together. We had sleepovers every weekend. We knew all of each other's secrets. We were as close as friends could be. Kara graduated from high school a year ahead of me and started attending art school. She got serious with a boy who she met at school. He was not a member of the church. In fact, he was an atheist. When she invited him to learn about the church and take the discussions, he told her he would as long as she heard him out first. He convinced Kara that she didn't need the church because she could just be a good person and that's all that matters. I was a young 18 year old when she told me what she had learned and then asked me why she couldn't just be a good person. I had no answer that day. I don't know if I lacked knowledge, if I lacked courage, or if I was just afraid of losing my best friend, but I didn't have an answer for her. She left the church and it was devastating to me. Because she didn't just leave the church, she eventually severed all ties with her family and, fam and member of friends, including me. She ended up marrying that boyfriend. They've been married a long time now, and she is a good person, but she is not completely happy. They move constantly and change jobs just as often, trying to find whatever it is that will make them feel happy and fulfilled. Kara has always wanted to be a mother, but she and her husband decided that they wanted to travel and be able to go to bars and clubs before they settle down. Then her husband decided he didn't think they should bring children in the world, so they continued with their lifestyle. Years later, when they were a lot older, they changed their minds and wanted to have children, but that was no longer possible for them. Carol will spend the rest of her life trying to find happiness through trivial life experiences. Deep down, I think she knows the church is true, but she also knows her husband will never come, that he will never enjoy living our standards. I wish that my 18-year-old self had known then what I know now about why we need to be more than just a good person and why we need to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Last week in Come Follow Me, we read Alma 6, 4 through 6, and thus they began to establish the order of the church in the city of Zarahemla. Now I would that you should understand that the word of God was liberal unto all, that none were deprived of the privilege of assuming themselves together to hear the word of God. Nevertheless, the children of God were commanded that they should gather themselves together off and join in fasting and mighty prayer in behalf of the welfare of the souls of those who knew not God. The scriptures tell us that we need to gather as members of his church. We need to fast, pray, and hear the word of God as gathered members of Christ's church. I'd like to share four reasons why I believe it is essential to belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. One, it is our laboratory classroom and library of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Two, we are required to receive ordinances and make covenants to be able to live with God and Jesus Christ again. Three, we need each other. And four, to bless others throughout the world. First, belonging to the Church of Jesus Christ allows us to learn Christ's doctrine. To be converted to the gospel, you need to study, hear, and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. We receive this knowledge through revelation from our prophets and apostles, scripture study, attending classes, sacrament meetings, and seminary. One of my biggest regrets in life is, was that I didn't place a lot of value in learning, not in school and not in church. This is why I didn't graduate from college until I was nearly 40. This is also why I often find myself still learning from my children as we have gospel discussions. Oh, how I wish I had been more diligent in my studies. If I had been paying attention in Sunday school and seminary, I might have had an answer to Kara's question all those years ago. We are never done learning. You will never know it all when it comes to the gospel. I remember watching conference when I was younger and President Hinckley said that he learned something new every time he went to the temple. I was taken aback by this. He was an old man. He was a prophet. I'm sure he had been to the temple many, many times 
And when we go to the temple, we do the same thing every time. So how could he possibly be learning something new every time he went? President Hinckley's words stuck with me. And now, every time I'm in the temple, I start to feel like I already know all of what I'm hearing. Then I replay President Hinckley's words in my mind. And it keeps me focused. And without fail, every time I go to the temple, I learn something new, something unique stands out, or I will receive an answer to a question. So every time you are in class, sitting in conference, or seminary, and you start to think, I already know all of this, think of President Hinckley's words and look for what is there that wasn't there before. Learning in a church environment is essential. It helps us to avoid learning false doctrine or interpret scriptures in the way we wish to interpret them. The church environment allows us to hear from other perspectives and experiences and to grow our testimonies as we hear others. The answers to all of our questions, the directions back to our Father in heaven, and the teachings of our prophets are old, of old are all found in the scriptures. Last year, when Elder Stevenson and other general authorities came to our state, there was an adult meeting for, for adult leaders. At the end of the meeting, these leaders held a question and answer session. Now here sat an apostle, a presiding bishop, and other area authorities. As far as I'm concerned, they've got all the answers. I mean, church is basically their full-time job. But what surprised me was that as the questions began to come to these wonderful leaders, every one of these men began to flip furiously through the pages of their scriptures looking for answers. They didn't use their own life experiences. They didn't regurgitate answers they had already given before. They didn't use what they had already had in their mind. They turned to the scriptures to find every answer. These leaders probably didn't realize they were teaching me a lesson as they led by example. We need to search the scriptures. This is how you will build your testimony. This is how you will be strong. And this is how you will be able to answer the hard questions. Next, we need the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to follow the counsel found in the scriptures. That in order to obtain celestial glory, we need to be baptized, receive our endowment, and be sealed in the temple. All of these ordinances are to be performed by priesthood authority. The authority has been restored on the earth through our prophet Joseph Smith. Attending sacrament meeting every Sunday allows us to renew our baptismal covenants, reflect on our thoughts and actions from the week, repent, and use our Savior's atonement. We are so lucky that God did not expect us to be perfect after we were eight. He and the Savior knew that we were going to mess up. A lot. So they gave us the sacrament. Most of you have been to the temple now. It is the best place to be. There we can experience peace, feel the spirit, feel the love for one another, and perform services for those who have already gone beyond the veil. And eventually, you will be able to perform your own ordinances and make covenants in the temple. One evening, our family went to the temple. Brother Lars and I went to do an endowment session, and we left Landon and Izzy in the baptismal font. When we were leaving, Izzy shared an example she had had in the temple that evening. While Izzy waited on the bench in the baptistry, a temple worker came up to her and asked her if she would perform a baptism for an elderly man that was sitting on the bench to the side of the font. Izzy said she would, and then the temple worker informed her that she would be performing the work for the man's wife. Izzy said as she stood in the font, looking right at the man sitting on the bench and with tears in his eyes, she knew that she was doing the Lord's work and how important it was to this man that his wife receive all ordinances so that they could be sealed together forever. Make a promise to yourself right now that you will always keep a current recommend, that you will always be worthy of that recommend, that one day you will use that recommend to receive your own endowment and be sealed to your own family. There is no treasure on earth greater than being in the temple with your family. Another reason we need to belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is to help each other. When we study our church history, we see the significant amount of persecution Joseph Smith went through as he shared the message of our Savior's restored gospel. We can see that this persecution followed him and the early pioneers as the church grew and as they fled to the Salt Lake Valley. But we also see that the persecution has lessened with time and as the church has grown. You and I both know that we will still experience persecution, but nothing in comparison to what our early pioneers went through. Part of that ease comes from strength in numbers. I grew up in the Los Angeles area. My, school, my high school had about 2,500 students and about five members of the church. My classmates were also very different than the kids here. Nobody practiced religion, nobody cared about religion, and no one really wanted to talk about religion. I was definitely known as the Mormon. 
and there were kids whose goals were to get me to break the ward of wisdom before I graduated high school. Sometimes it was great being one of the few members of the church because I knew I had to bring my A game to represent my savior every single day. And other times it was really hard and exhausting. I felt like every day when I left seminary, I had to put on that protective shield around me and I had to work to keep it between me and the temptations that surrounded me. I wished I'd had others there to help me hold up that shield and have my back when I was being attacked for what I stood for. It would have been nice to not be the only one not drinking, smoking, swearing, or being immoral. Being a member at school was always a conscious effort, and I had to keep holding up that shield every day. On the flip side, when I was at church, my weekly activities, dances, seminary, or camps, my shoulders were lightened. I could drop that shield and just be me, because I was surrounded by others who knew of God's plan and held my same standards. Part of our gathering together is to feel a sense of oneness, to feel supported, and to grow stronger. We need to recognize that we are all that support for each other. We don't know what each individual in our class or quorum is going through as they endure their week. We need to make sure that we are the support, strength, and love that others need when they walk in our church doors. They need us to carry that shield for them for a while, and in return, they will help carry ours. Then, when we are back in those environments where we feel that we have to stand alone, our burdens will have been lightened, our hearts will be full from what we have received through the participation of God's church. One of my children shared during Come Follow Me one week that there was a peer making false accusations about the church, and as she tried to defend what she believed to be true, he would not hear her and only wanted to argue. But as other members of the church came into the classroom and joined in the conversation, the other student became less argumentative and listened as these girls clarified the truths they knew. Together, they were stronger. The final reason we need to be part of the church is to bless others around the world. As covenant-keeping members, we pay a 10% tithe to the Lord. These monies are sacred. We don't give that money to pay our church leaders. We don't buy President Nelson a mansion. We don't adorn our prophets and apostles with gold crowns. The church funds are there to help members and non-members around the world. Even if we are the best kind of person on the earth, we would not be able to do the work that the the humanitarian work that the church can do with all of its members working collectively. The church builds temples around the world so that all members can have access to the ordinances and covenants we all need. The church gives $40 million a year to humanitarian efforts, helping people around the world to recover from natural disasters, starvation, and illness. Church funds contribute to supporting thousands of missionaries around the world. Without these efforts, the gospel could not be spread worldwide. Individuals can be examples of the gospel and practice missionary efforts, but the efforts of thousands of missionaries worldwide increase the spread of gospel exponentially. And that is why we are, what we are here for, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of men. This last month, a girl on a local water polo team signed a letter of intent with San Diego State. My first thought when I read it in the paper was, that school wasn't very good. I don't remember there being a superstar athlete. How do they have a player signing with a Division I school and not be a winning team? And then I thought about a player on my son's water polo team who is an exceptionally great player. All of our opposing teams know how good he is, and he is often double teamed during games so that he can be stopped. But the difference between him and the girl is that he has a whole team of great players backing him up so they can still win games. While both players above are great athletes, only one was able to lead to victory, and that was because he was surrounded by other great players. He didn't have to carry that team alone. We can be a good person all by ourselves during our time on earth, but we cannot have the win, making it to the celestial kingdom, without the church. You need a team of gospel learning, ordinances and covenants, priesthood authority, a system of support, and an opportunity to care for others. The church makes us stronger and leads us to the victory of eternal life. I wish I could go back when I was 18 and tell Kara all of these truths of why we need the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But since I can't, my hope is that now all of you will understand why you need the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and pray to know this for yourself so that when you are approached by your good friends about why you need the church, you will be prepared. I want to testify to you that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is Christ's church on the earth. I know that only through him can we experience true joy. Now, just not just now, but for eternity. I know that he created a plan to lead us back to our Father in heaven to have eternal life. 
He made the ultimate sacrifice of the atonement and eventually death when it was not required for his salvation. He loves us that much. I know that he knows our heart, he knows our pain, he knows our grief, he knows our sadness, and he is the only one that can mend our broken heart. If we just turn to him, he will do this. I know that his love is unconditional. I know that he only asks us to do our best and he has made up the rest. I know he eagerly awaits to hear from you on a daily basis. He is concerned with your happiness. I know that through him, this is the only way to truly be happy. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. help us find eternal joy. Um, I have grown to love baptisms for the dead and know that they bless us who are living and those who have already passed on. Um, along with that, we have laying on of hands, which I know gives us the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is so necessary for our guidance, our knowledge of truth, and our revelations during this life. Um, the church also provides ordinances such as patriarchal blessings or endowments that are another form of guidance that can also give us peace. I love and know that families are so essential to Heavenly Father's plan, and we've been given ordinances such as um, eternal marriage and sealings. These are there, and I know they are here to help us to be together forever and have that same joy that we have here on earth. Um, I'm also very grateful that we are given these guidances uh, um, through our life so that we can try to become like Heavenly Father and learn and grow. This church is such an amazing place, an amazing form of happiness, thanks to all these instructions and guidelines they give us. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I'd like to bear my testimony that I know that this church is the true church, and that even though the world may try to convince us otherwise, that if we always have faith in Heavenly Father and Jesus, that we will be able to know that truth for ourselves. I'd like to bear my testimony that even though we're going through such tough and challenging times today, uh, that if we have faith in Heavenly Father, and that if we always listen to the teachings in the scriptures and the teachings of the teachings of the prophet and the teachings of all of the apostles that we will be able to 
make it through these tough and challenging times and that we will be able to continue forward and that we will be able to be okay. I'd like to give a challenge to all the youth at this time that uh, either on your social media or by texting a friend, I'd like to challenge you to share your favorite scripture or your favorite article from the friend or the ensign or the new era. Savior there beside me. He leads me through the night. He's always been my guide. He promised he will never leave me. Though my burdens seem too much to bear, he'll bless me. So whatever he commands, I will Think of all the ways he's blessed me. My journey may seem long, but he'll lift me with his love. A perfect love that's never ending. He will give me, give me all the strength I need him. So Don't forget to watch the talent show tonight on our Vaisalya Steak YouTube channel at 7 o'clock. See you there.